I was a simple young journalist back then, speaking at an international conference on the beautiful idea that is communism. I received the invitation this morning. For the first time in my life, someone has invited me. I've prepared a few slides for my presentation. A folder with my speech for today. The inside of my suit. A gramophone record. Damn, my whole speech is out of order. It's a good thing I wrote the speech on the back of an old comic book. All I need to do is piece it back together and the speech will be ready. I did it! And my teacher said I had cognitive issues. <clears throat> good day, sir. Sorry, uh, there's no entry here. The program is live. And uh, good day to you too, sir. Uh, while I appreciate your diligence, I am one of the speakers. I I'm afraid I'm tardy, but I really must get inside. Uh, my speech is a glorious message that will enlighten and empower the good folks here. Mr. Tardy, eh? I find it strange that you're afraid of your own name, but let me check the list. Uh, no, no, I'm tardy, not I'm tardy. I'm Kowalski, Evan Kowalski, and I'm tardy. I'm sorry, I, I don't have a Mr. Kowalski or a Mr. Tardy on the list of speakers. My speech fits the theme of the conference perfectly, since it's about communism and... But what? I, I must be on that list. Besides, I received an invitation from you. Please, show it to me and we can clear all of this up. Hmm. That is indeed an invitation from us. I told you. Please accept my apologies. I was not informed there was a schedule change. Uh, I think I can squeeze you in during the coffee break. Please proceed to the stage. Thank you. Oh, and don't worry. While you're walking across the stage, our producer will definitely be playing commercials. Good morning. My name is Sean Redkick, and I represent the people of New Pork. Blood Red Socialism is pouring in across the borders of our world. We can't just stand idly by and watch as the enemies of freedom undo what our fathers fought for. We're not gonna watch men die face down in the muck in this bloody war on the peninsula so that the Red Invasion can secretly pour into our country. Communist evil. Uh, communist evil. It's like a real Santa Claus. Thanks. Communist evil is like a real-life Santa Claus. Because it, uh, well, it sneaks into our houses, doesn't it? And eats up all our cookies, leaves us presents that we have to return because no one wants another pair of socks. Wait, that's not what communist evil does. What the hell am I saying? As we all know, Enemy intelligence agents have infiltrated our country. They could even be here right now in our midst. Like, for example, right there. Or over there. Maybe you're one. Or your lovely wife there. Yeah, she could definitely be one. She's got that commie look, all right. Or you. You. Or you. Yes, you are a communist spy. A sleeper agent working in the shadows. And such agents, uh... They have wonderful dreams. Yes, they have wonderful dreams in which 
They dance around nude. Uh, um, everything just hanging out. They call it a flop party, if you get me. Actually sounds pretty uncomfortable. Wait, what? Okay, maybe let's just leave those agents for now. I urge you all to stay vigilant, and even the smallest symptom, the barest hint of communist activity, should be reported to the authorities immediately. In closing, I would like to... You wanted to admit you're a socialist. In closing, I would like to warn against the socialists among us. Not naming any names, just watch out for them. Socialists are bad. Speaking of which, as I've just been informed by our producer, instead of our planned break, we will have an unplanned guest. It just so happens I have already had the displeasure of being smeared in his rag of a newspaper. I'm sure you'll all love him. Ladies and gentlemen, Evan Kowalski. Hmm, this is going to be interesting. Empty frame. Hurry up! People are waiting for the speech to begin. You know, I am prepared to give a slide presentation, and at the risk of you calling me Mr. Prepared, <laughs> I couldn't help but notice that there's no canvas on the projector screen. Mr. Kowalski, please understand you weren't on the list, so we didn't receive any instructions regarding your needs. Fortunately, we are professionals, so I have some canvas right here. There will be a break soon, and someone will install it. No, no. Uh, no need for a break. I'll put it up myself in no time. The working class of the cities and farms isn't afraid of a little hard work. As you wish. Here you go. The projector canvas. Okay, I'm going back to the stage. The screen's too high up. <laughs> oh, man. I got the slides for my presentation all mixed up. I need to fix this quick. I still need to play the Matryoshka National Anthem. A gramophone record with an anthem honoring the leader. Alright, now 
now for my speech. Where did I put my notes? Uh, uh just a moment. Good morning, comrades, those in the studio and those watching at home. If you're thinking, where have I seen this dapper gentleman before, then perhaps you were in Booniesville several days ago at the HASP Manufacturers Conference, where I spoke about the responsibility of the working class in building a single class society. A little about me. My name is Evan Kowalski, and I am the editor-in-chief of the Daily Worker Monthly. Uh, by the way, I highly recommend buying a subscription. I have come here today, quite unexpectedly, with a very important, exciting ideological message. Communism is good. In fact, communism is the best. Boo! Boo! There's no room in our country for communism. Shut your commie mouth, Evan. Get lost! <laughs> now, gentlemen, there's no need to get angry. Are you telling our viewers that poor people shouldn't have more money? Do you hate the poor? Are you against the idea that every human being is equally important and entitled to a fair chance? Are we not all humanitarians? I won't be part of this farce. And there, you see? He runs away using his costly running shoes. Do the poor not deserve to run? I wonder if one of my other colleagues will engage me in a debate. I'm interested to see how they will claim that education, culture, and industry is not in our common national good and how every citizen should not have the same equal rights to reap their benefits? Enough! Ha! See? That's what I thought. No one's brave enough for such a challenging discussion. Okay, then. Let's move on to the powerful beacon that is beautiful Matryoshka. Located just behind the Iron Curtain between the Capitalist Union and the Socialist Alliance... Boo! Get off the stage! Uh, Matryoshka serves as a shining example of communism done right. Get off the stage, Kami! Boo! All glory and honor belongs to the leader who infallibly and confidently leads his nation towards a bright future. Boo! Get out of here before I burn the building down! I'm picking up on a little tension in the room, so, uh... How about a joke? Uh, uh, what would we have in the States if we didn't have capitalism? Everything! I'm at the meeting of the party. Make it quick. Glory to Matryoshka, comrade leader. Ah, Major Orlova. How's your uh, vacation at Uncle Sam's? More fruitful than ever. Please turn on the capitalist channel, comrade leader. What the hell? Comrade leader. <sighs> I see you found me a very interesting souvenir. Bring him to me at once. Yes, comrade leader. For the glory of Matryoshka. In the leader's heart. Uh, in conclusion to this undoubtedly illuminating speech, I will tell you, comrades, my greatest wish, that one day our nations will join together and goose step, I, I mean, uh, march uh, together in the one true direction towards a stronger state, join together with Matryoshka. Stop the program! I thank you, comrades, for your attention, and I wish you a good day. This is an outrage, Mr. Kowalski. Thank you. 
I mean, I know political discourse can become disagreeable, but to throw perfectly good fruit at a man for his views is an unconscionable breach of common courtesy. I was talking about your presentation. Now then, please get out and never come here again. Ah, one more thing. We'll send you the cleaning bill. What? Well then, I'll expect you to deliver the tomatoes with it. I'll make ketchup. Goodbye. Wonderful presentation. The Matryoshkin authorities are impressed with your work. As am I. Ah, uh, oh. Uh, thank you, Miss, uh... I'm Anna. Anna Iglov. Someone will contact you once you get home. In case of any emergency, this envelope will help you contact me. We'll meet again soon, comrade Ivan. Anna. Authorities. Envelope. Wait, what? Oh, you're back. How did it go? It went great. Well, up until I started. Then everyone just laughed. As usual. Oh, uh, by the way, some tomatoes should be arriving soon. So, that's something. Oh, uh, you had a call from Matryoshka. Your mother memorized the number. They said you should call them back. Oh, one more thing. You remember that record, the sandwich march? Yeah? What about it? I've decided that... Since I'm a man now, I'm too old for that kind of music. I gave it to the cab driver as a tip. You... you... That was a rare limited edition pressing! It was worth hundreds of dollars! Oh... I see. Huh... Really? Well, a man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. And this man just lost hundreds of dollars. <laughs> well, I suppose just don't worry about it. And chin up. You were great on TV. Oh, let's see what she wrote here. Comrade Evan, stay vigilant. We believe someone might have seen us together. If you get caught, please deny everything. I await your signal, Anna Eagliff. Jane Kowalski is the ideal mom. The entire house is spanking clean, and she still finds times for her hobbies, like shooting, judo, knife fighting, helicopter lessons, ooh, and needlepoint. This is where I assemble my newspaper, the Daily Worker Monthly. If there's one thing I like, it's music. If there are two things, it's music and pudding. It's too bad my parents never took photos of me when I was really little. <laughs> I must have been a dreadfully cute baby. Hi, how was the conference? A nice girl came to hear me speak, and she said she loved it. It turned out she was from... Patryoshka! And she said they'd heard about me there. Do you understand? About me! I also got an envelope from her that was sealed with Matryoshka's coat of arms! Hmm, that must be a very important envelope. Well, it sounds like you had quite the day. A speech and a new friend. Uh, Dad said someone called for me? Oh, yes. They were calling from Matryoshka and said you can call them back at 0071234. Oh, and give them the password, Zagrislav. Thanks, Mom. I need to take care of a few things. A white bulb on a blood-red background. Ah, <sighs> the essence of matryoshkinism. Thanks to this book, I will be able to see Matryoshka with my own eyes one day.
I only recently had it made. I've always wanted to go to Matryoshka. Zero. Zero. Seven. One. Two. Three. Four. Quiet. Huh, no signal. Dad, when I dial the number to Matryoshka, nothing happens. The phone's dead and there's no signal. Go check if the international switchboard in the basement is malfunctioning. The neighbor's cat must have gotten tired of waiting for us to open the window. My parents use a lot of gardening soil because they're always replanting things around the garden. I'm not allowed to look in there. That's where Mom keeps her chemicals. Years ago, I made a solemn vow to never again ride a bike. Without training wheels. <sighs> Those skinned up knees still haunt me to this day. So how's the phone? The raccoon jumped on the switchboard and messed up the cables, but I think I've got it fixed. Zero, zero, seven, one, two, three, four. Hello? This is Evan. Password. Zegrizislav. Yes, correct. That is the current password. If we want to continue this conversation, you need to place near the phone, since this is an official conversation, a photo of the leader. Uh, okay, uh, give me just a second. A list of faithful subscribers to my communism propagating newspaper. Oddly, they are almost all named Smith, Jones, Johnson, or Williams. According to my sources, the leader is the shining, handsome light of eternal freedom that illuminates the path to happiness and prosperity for all of Matryoshka. I've grown very attached to the woman in this photo. I've always felt like she's important to me somehow. We've been waging a war on the peninsula for the past several months. I keep my most secret secrets in that cupboard. Not to brag, but my clever magnetic locking mechanism is a fine invention. Mom and Dad won't talk about my ancestors, so when I was a child, they made up my very own family tree to fill in the gaps. Huh, 
They're the best parents a guy could ask for. <laughs>